So as a US-based researcher interested in issues related to Turkey, Syria, and particularly the Kurdish question, the role of US security assistance to Turkey has always been something that I found very interesting and very relevant. Because when we look at this conflict throughout its history, the primary way that the United States has been involved is through its relationship with Turkey. As we know, Turkey has been a member of NATO for 70 years. And as such, that means that the security and military establishment of the United States and the intelligence establishment of the United States have had very close relationships with their military and intelligence counterparts in Turkey. What this meant in practice was the US used these relationships to support uh, far right governments, you know, governments hostile to indigenous peoples, minorities, to socialists, uh, trade unions, dissidents, all kinds of political pluralism in order to advance American hegemony and strategic goals in terms of countering the Soviet Union during the Cold War and countering any kind of national liberation movements and socialist ideology. So all of that is well known, it's not new, but what I found in researching the outlines of this pattern of security assistance, um, particularly from the 1980s to today, um, you know, the start of the Kurdish conflict, was that it goes a bit deeper. Um, the ambassador at the time was Ronald Spears, um, and other US documents and historical records show that like many US ambassadors at the time, he was someone known for being close to the military establishments of where he was posted. Um, that's true of Turkey. There are interviews with him talking about his close relationships with the Turkish military. And in this cable, he's writing home to Congress to ask for more funding for a security assistance program called IMET or International Military Education and Training. In the US, the way that everything is funded is through Congress. Um, they basically vote to say, here's how much money we're going to send to the Department of Defense, to the Department of State, to USAID, to all of these different international military and diplomacy programs. And they pick that amount of money and they vote on it. They can debate it. They can cut it. They can increase it. So the ambassador is saying that he believes that the US is spending too little on this particular military assistance program for Turkey and he wants them to increase it. And so in this cable, he's naming several military officers who've been trained in the United States under IMET as examples of why this program is successful. And what I was able to find was that five of those individuals then one year later went on to participate in the highest levels of the military coup of September, 1980. And this coup fit that pattern, the military seized power, and immediately moved to crush all dissent, you know, attacking the left, attacking Kurds and other minorities, and imposing a very authoritarian system of government on Turkey that has political implications in Turkey to this day. So this was, you know, this was a tragedy. This was a political upheaval um, whose impacts are still being felt. That's had a huge impact on arguably starting the Kurdish conflict because it was the repression of the Kurdish people in the era after the coup that led to Kurds choosing armed struggle and um, that conflict beginning in that new phase. And these documents, this diplomatic cable shows that people involved in that military takeover were people who, according to the ambassador, were trained in the US.